And I bring it up, the uh, the nature of anonymity and these kinds of things, because I think that's a big part of people like your effectiveness and other YouTubers, other people that are making change, because you see what people are up against, like myself and others who are out there and we've got our faces out. Once you kind of manifest in the real world, once you can be identified and you have liabilities and things that people can look after or go after, I think it becomes a much different equation in terms of how you're able to parse out your message. I mean, do you think that's a big part of it? I think that's true to an extent. I mean, take you, for example. You're 19, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Uh, I mean, you already have a Wikipedia page. True. Like, your online footprint is cemented. If you were to try to go anonymous past this, that's always going to be there. Mm. You know what I mean? Once you kind of come out and you, you kind of askew and throw away the anonymity, uh, whether it's willingly or unwillingly, um, it, it, it's, it, anonymity is almost like uh, virginity. You know, once once <laughs> right, you get right. fucked, there's no one fucking it. <laughs> so once once it's out there, it's done with. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I find anonymity to be an important integral part of the Internet. I mean, it has been since its inception from message boards to image boards and onward. I mean, it's always been something that has allowed people to speak freely. And when you take that away, it just it, it seems like a bad idea to me. I, I know a lot of social media platforms, a lot of uh conglomerates and corporations want to strip it away. Facebook and the Twitters and all of them want as much information as they can get. If you want a Gmail account, you need to give them, you know, your your phone number. And before that, it was an address and a name and just ridiculous amounts of information because for some reason, they're terrified of the idea of an anonymous user base. I mean, you can see this in comment sections on websites from news sites to even scientific journals where they've, uh, you know, either done away with anonymous comments or they're asking for a real ID identification to actually be able to post comments now on certain websites. So there's there's a change taking place, and I don't think we should be pushing it along. Mm. I think we should be dragging our feet as much as we can and enjoying it while we can, because 10 years from now, 20 years from now, kids growing up on the Internet will probably look back and be like, holy shit, you could be anonymous online? That's mm. fucking wild. Yeah, well, it's true. And, and I think why that's so integral is because of how the system is. You know, Well, we know that's why... It's so integral is because we are in a place such that if you go against the mainstream and even it's gotten to the point where, and this is something I think you explore in a lot of your videos, if you're not on board with things that are absolute lunacy, that things 10 years ago would have been thought ridiculous, you're the subject of ridicule among peers, among employers, among other kinds of people. And so it's almost a necessity to express a dissident opinion. And I really wanted to get into this kind of a subject because we're at a point right now, and this is kind of the broader topic I wanted to talk to you about, is we're at a point right now where this dissident movement, and I don't even want to describe it as right-wing or left-wing, but just really kind of dissent against whatever like neoliberal kind of postmodern atmosphere we're in, where we're kind of at a weird place in this area of dissent. I think this is something a lot of people are feeling, because in many ways, I think we were all unified in 2016, and people like yourself, people like me, people like even Neil, and people like the alt-right or the alt-light or even ostensibly establishment right-wing people were all kind of on the same team. We were all against the SJW type. We were all against that kind of thing. And now it feels like there's a lot of confusion. It feels like people call it infighting, people call it counter-signaling or punching right or whatever, but there isn't really a clear idea of of what the direction is, what we're going for. And so I look at somebody like yourself where I don't think you're necessarily a totally political person. I think all of your, most of your YouTube content is for entertainment, it's for humor. Um, and I, I see how you interact with JF and others, and it's it's mostly just about how do we get laughs, how do we get views and drama, and, and that's there's nothing wrong with that. But we're forced, people like yourself are forced, I think, to almost take like a quasi-political stance in this day and age, right? And so I just want to kind of, I just kind of want to get an idea, pick your brain a little bit about what you think the state of this movement, if you could even call it that, is right now. Because I, I'm, I'm feeling like we're very confused at the moment. Well, I, I would hesitate to call it a movement or even use, uh, <clears throat> sorry, I've got a bit of a cold, so you have to bear with me. Oh, that's all right. Or even use something like uh, we. I mean, you've got so many different groups that kind of came together to accomplish a, a pretty specific set of goals around 2015, 2016. You saw a really hard pushback against SJWs, which I, th I think we kind of saw in multiple ways. 
but he also saw kind of a push in politics. Uh, you know, Trump represented this idea that he was an establishment, he was going to drain the swamp. And so you had all these different groups kind of come together from, you know, an image board like 4chan to something like Reddit, where it's more user based and, you know, there's more ID tied to it. So it, it's these different communities kind of commingling to accomplish something. And then once that thing has been accomplished, infighting usually is going to take place. Um, I, you know, I, I don't want to comment on it because I don't identify as it. And it would feel kind of dickish for me to sit here and say, well, you guys should do this and you guys should do that when I'm not you guys, you know, sitting here and chastising you or giving you pointers on what to do. But, I, you know, I, I think you'll find more cohesion, I guess, as the next election cycle kicks in. And people will set aside whatever their their differences are for that moment, at least, to do something. Um, but I, I think it speaks to the perceived threat of this kind of super hyper liberal SJW leftist mentality uh, that these kind of groups could even come together in the first place. And now that they're kind of dissipating a little bit, I think it it, it kind of signals that at least there might be a bit of a shift taking place where even regular people at this point now recognize that you know, oh, holy shit, uh, these liberal professors are fucking crazy. These students that are coming out of universities are a little nutty. Uh, corporations have taken it too far with their policies. And I think that that's made people relax a little bit because now they don't feel like we have to put up a unified front and, uh, you know, go after this because now more people are recognizing the same shit they recognized years in advance. I guess that would be my take on that. Yeah, no, I agree with that. I do feel like there is kind of an opening. And, and this is something I saw... Uh, or something I've been seeing a lot is people kind of reanalyzing the Trump election, reanalyzing 2016 and saying, you know, it wasn't so much about Trump. In many ways, there was a political impetus for somebody like Trump in the sense that people were outraged about immigration, people were outraged about trade. But generally, it was just an anti-establishment. It was just a, a negation of what was happening as opposed to a positive vision of, well, it's, I mean, don't get me wrong, I love Trump, but I feel like generally speaking, it was more of a cultural rejection of the establishment. And I think that's a good way that you phrase it in terms of where even regular people were saying, we don't want this hyper-liberal system, and, and if that makes us bedfellows with the right wing, if that makes us bedfellows with these people who are saying extreme things on image boards, well, you know, we're, we're all kind of working against the same people. We all, you know, the enemy of the enemy is my friend sort of a deal. And I do think that we are making a shift in a big way. It's kind of difficult, though, because you see that there is a shift taking place. And, and at, by the same token, while I think people are moving away from this kind of political correctness, social justice mentality, by the same token, I think there is like a counter-reaction or a counter-revolution by the establishment that's taking place. And I think you've covered a lot of these topics. You talk about like the bully hunters. You talked about, uh, I saw your Pokemon video about the Bulbapedia or that, that Pokemon thing. Do you, feel, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do you feel like there's like a counter-reaction happening against that? I feel like there, there's almost this frenzy on the part of the left because they sense that this is happening. Yeah, I mean, they're they're trying to claw and dig their way back. Yeah, I mean, I think they notice a shift taking place, too. And so you're kind of seeing, uh, well, I mean, as they put it, the resistance, you know, mm. this ridiculous notion of we're going to fight conservatism or the alt-right or anything that's not us uh, tooth and nail on any platform that we can. Um, you kind of see it popping up. But I think when you start to see a cultural shift take place, whether it's to the left or to the right, once that begins, you can't undo it. And the left can kick and scream all they fucking want. But it, once it kind of starts to do that shift, you've got a good, I'd say, decade of breathing room as that shift takes place. I mean, they could go march in the fucking streets. Antifa can dress in black and break windows. They can throw tantrums on universities. But I think the general populace has become familiar enough now with it that they just look at it with almost kind of a disdain or disgust. And I think the kids growing up, uh, you know, younger ones in elementary and junior high kind of look at it and they're like, we, do, we don't want to be like that. These people are the, the ass end of every joke on the Internet. We don't want to be made fun of to that degree. Right. Well, yeah, no, that's what really gives me hope. I've been talking a lot about this on my show. I gave a speech about it, Generation Z. I'm a big believer because, you know, we tend to look at Hollywood, us us older people. I'm, I'm technically Generation Z, but I don't know. It's kind of difficult. I was very either late millennial or earlier Generation Z, so I still kind of remember what it was like before the ubiquity of the Internet. But I think older people tend to look at Hollywood. They tend to look at television, legacy media. 
But if you look at what's on the internet, whether it's someone like PewDiePie or the various Twitch streamers or, or the kind of things that they're consuming, it's it's not necessarily political, but it is, as you're describing, this kind of cultural resistance to just the horrible things that are happening on the left that are just obviously objects of ridicule. So, I mean, do you see the same kind of hope for Generation Z that I do? Do you see the same trends or do you think that's kind of a myth? I, well, I think when you start to do generational analysis, right, um, one of the things that always fascinated me is a lot of people like to blame the boomers, but mm. I, I think a heavy burden is, should be laid on the shoulders of Gen X. Mm. I think Gen X, you know, the la or latchkey kids, that kind of generation, were almost apathetic. They kind of just fucking tuned everything out. Uh, and so they weren't as active or empathetic as they should have been to the current climate and just kind of let things metastasize into this overgrowth of cancer that really just overtook the millennials. Um, that, that would be my first thing. As far as Gen Z, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I see a lot of crazy stuff happening. If you look at gaming, if you look at something like Overwatch that has a ton of players, I mean, they're banning toxic players. They're, they're setting up policies where if you say something mean about somebody outside of the game, they'll ban you. Uh, you know, you look at a platform like Twitch where most of these kids go to watch their content. And, you know, a Twitch streamer is basically held at uh, gunpoint. They're mm. a hostage to the terms of service that are on that platform. So I, I think that Gen Z is aware of that as they watch these, you know, different content creators that they like. And they watch because, you know, they're not really doing anything political. They're just telling jokes. And so they're watching and they're thinking, well, why is this guy getting banned? Or why is this guy getting censored? Or why is his, uh, his stream getting pulled down? Or why are they fucking with him? And it probably, you know, starts to build up feelings in them of, well, that's fucking gay. So, again, it kind of plays back into that original point of they don't want to be like that. I don't know what their politics are going to be, but I don't think they're going to be a PC generation. I don't think they're going to be politically correct in any way, shape, or form as we've known it previously. Yeah, I agree. I agree.